Since its 1955 opening, the Disneyland Resort has swelled to include multiple theme parks, which currently boast 54 fantastic rides. From Star Wars to Spider-Man, Dumbo to Mr. Toad, here's how Disney superfans rank them all. Now your host, Walt Disney. Jumpin' Jellyfish is one of the few remaining original rides at Disney California Adventure, as well as the bottom-ranked experience on this list. That may be because it's aimed at kids. This peewee-friendly, parachute-style ride gently glides up its 40-foot tower, then drops you serenely part of the way, with a few more ups and downs before slowly lowering to the ground. Main Street vehicles come in four old-timey varieties, the horse-drawn trolley, the jitney, the fire engine, and the double-decker omnibus. All four rides are one-way and slowly take you up or down Main Street. The drivers are generally congenial, and the ride is very much like winding down the main drag of a sleepy town. Not a huge thrill, but it's immersive enough in Americana that everyone should try it at least once. The Golden Zephyr is a circular rocket ride that swings your ship over Paradise Bay, and that's about it. Unlike the Astro Orbiter at Disneyland, you can't control your rocket. You can, however, let your imagination run wild. The Golden Zephyr is pretty at night, too. The tower is covered in lights, as are the cables connecting the rockets to the tower. It's one of the original rides left at California Adventure from its opening days. Inside Out Emotional Whirlwind is a reskinned Flix Flyers from the old A Bug's Land, but built up on a platform so you fly higher than before. Riley's emotions from Inside Out are depicted on the baskets, which are connected to Riley's memory balls, resembling a balloon ride. The tower tilts from the top as the ride spins around, giving an up and down sensation, much like life itself. The frequently misspelled Astro Orbiter is another circular rocket ride, except you can control your own rocket to go up or down at your whim. Sitting majestically at the front of Tomorrowland off Main Street, the Astro Orbiter and its golden tower announce the future in all its gleaming glory. The ride itself can be an easy spin if you don't move your rocket, or a nauseating ordeal if you continuously push and pull your controller to hit the highs and lows of the ride. It's your choice. Gadget, a character from the Chippendale Rescue Rangers cartoon, has made a small fry-friendly steel track coaster that packs in a surprising number of turns and drops for such a small footprint. A cartoon hand cranks the gears, taking the acorn train up the first hill. Other fun touches include a cartoon frog spitting water over the tracks. It may be a kid's ride, but it's fun for people of all ages. Mater's friends square dance on a figure eight track as you're pulled behind each tractor in a little trailer that swings side to side. Tolerance for the ride is on two planes, how much you enjoy pulling sideways G's and how much you like Larry the Cable Guy's crooning as Mater sings and puns away. It does get holiday overlays for Halloween and Christmas as Mater plows through more jokes and themed songs, giving the ride a unique feel. The Mad Tea Party from Alice in Wonderland is a spinning ride where visitors ride an oversized teacup on a rotating platform and control how fast their individual cup spins or doesn't. Sometimes you'll see a family in their cup taking it easy, while other cups are a whirling blur of flying arms feverishly turning the control wheel. If you get motion sickness, steer clear. But if you don't, this is a treat. The love it or loathe it nature of the ride means some individuals may rate this much higher than others. Straight from Dumbo, the Casey Jr. Circus Train is a miniature railroad with an engineer, an internal combustion engine, and circus-themed riding cars. It's a fun ride, but high wait times when the park is crowded probably affected the ranking for this one. Only two trains run at a time, and riders are allowed to choose which car they want to ride in, making the load time longer than it could be. Pinocchio's Daring Journey is a dark ride that debuted in 1983 as part of Fantasyland's overhaul. The ride follows the trajectory of the Disney film Pinocchio, as the little wooden boy is taken by the evil Stromboli and forced to perform as a living puppet. Pinocchio's conscience, Jiminy Cricket, tries to help. But Pinocchio is a bit of a blockhead. The best part of the ride is nearly getting swallowed by Monstro the Whale. Cool, but it doesn't measure up to the other classic dark rides. Dumbo the Flying Elephant is an original spinning ride that is one of just 13 rides left from Disneyland's 1955 opening. As with the Astro Orbitor, 
Riders can control whether their elephant cockpit goes up or down, though this ride is gentler than the Tomorrowland attraction. The line for this ride can be up to an hour on a busy day, as it's quite popular for families to ride together. That family friendliness may be why it ranks higher than the Orbiter, however. What it lacks in thrills, it makes up for in bonding time. Although Autopia has been through multiple changes since it debuted on July 17, 1955, some things remain the same, such as the noxious gas fumes emanating from the backs of the cars as they travel the winding Disney freeway. The cars travel a whopping 6 miles per hour along a guided track, though riders may control the pedal and steering wheel to a degree. This one's more for kids, as adults get enough road rage on the LA freeways just getting to America's favorite theme park. We just drove 2,460 miles just for a little Roy Wally entertainment. The moose says you're closed, I say you're open. Previously known as the Sun Wheel and then Mickey's Fun Wheel, Pixar Pal Around is 150 feet tall and boasts two kinds of gondolas, fixed and swinging. Thrill seekers will want the swinging cars, which slide back and forth toward the interior of the wheel. Be forewarned, though, like most Ferris wheels, the ride is slow, not just in revolutions, but because there are 24 cars to load. The red car trolley has four stops along Buena Vista Street and Hollywood Land, and like its Main Street vehicle counterparts, is a bit of nostalgia for guests, while also being used for a song and dance show throughout the day. If you don't feel like walking from near the park's entrance to Hollywood Land, hop the red car trolley and roll down the street in vintage style. The Mark Twain Riverboat Ride has survived since 1955 and remains a beloved attraction. Guests can sail down the rivers of America and Frontierland on this giant paddle wheel steamboat, pretending they're on the mighty Mississippi. Guests can explore the four decks or just chill out on the rail, taking in the sights. The boat is named after the pen name of one of Walt Disney's favorite writers, Samuel Langhorne Clemens, or Mark Twain, as he was professionally known. It's a serene trip and pretty tame, and also 14 minutes long, which may have dropped it in the rankings. Grab a paddle as you and 19 other guests all row your way down the rivers of America in a real canoe. You'll get in some arm work to balance all the walking at Disneyland, plus you may ride alongside the occasional deer or moose, though they might be made of plaster. However, the amount of paddling does tire some people out, even though the guides do most of the heavy work. Unlike the cars of Autopia, the Disneyland monorail is powered by electricity as it cruises around the park. You can board either in Tomorrowland or Downtown Disney. Though the ride only travels 2.5 miles, it takes 20 minutes round trip, which is a big time commitment if you're trying to cram in a lot of rides. The ride also shuts down in extreme heat because it's not air-conditioned. It also closes for the fireworks shows, so availability is limited. The ride that started it all, sort of. King Arthur Carousel, one of the original 1955 opening day rides, was inspired by the Griffith Park merry-go-round in Los Angeles that Walt Disney used to love visiting with his children. It was also the scene of a key moment in the 2013 film Saving Mr. Banks. It may not be the most cutting-edge ride, but for the nostalgic, it's an old-fashioned classic that's the most Disney ride in all of Disneyland. First known as Snow White and her adventures on Disneyland's 1955 opening day, and then redone as Snow White's Scary Adventures in 1983, the ride now called Snow White's Enchanted Wish has received yet another makeover. Unveiled on April 30th, 2021, the dark ride features new effects, including the smell of baked pies. The improvements may change the ride's future ranking, as given the new moniker, it's probably fair to say it's now less scary. The Silly Symphony Swings features individual and tandem swings that whirl you through the air over Paradise Bay. The telescoping tower undulates as it spins, giving a more exciting ride. It's not uncommon to see riders with their arms extended as though they are flying, while the William Tell Overture plays. Though it's the type of ride you could find at a carnival or county fair, this one has extra Disney magic. The storybook Land Canal Boats covers most of the same territory as the Casey Jr. Circus Train, except much closer to the models depicting various Disney stories. Starting at Monstro's Mouth, a tour guide narrates your placid trip. It's a leisurely, relaxing way to take a load off while reliving some of Disney's greatest hits in a kid-friendly format. Jesse's Critter Carousel is a smaller merry-go-round than the King Arthur Carousel. 
It features various varmints from the Woody's Roundup cartoon in Toy Story 2. Guests can hop on a bunny if they like, for instance. The ride is more geared towards kids and revolves slower than its Disneyland counterpart, but it's pretty cute, all told, which may explain why it ranks higher than the original. The Jungle Cruise, one of the 13 original rides, just got a facelift. Reopening in July 2021 in conjunction with the release of the Jungle Cruise feature film. The ride is known for its tour guides and their corny jokes, which will remain, but several of the older scenes which were problematic were removed or revamped. One thing that hopefully remains getting to see the backside of water. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the backside of water. Yay! Leave it to Goofy to take a Wild Mouse-style coaster and make it sillier. Goofy's Sky School is a bit wilder than Gadget's Go Coaster, though much tamer than the Incredicoaster. Still, it does have scary moments because each sudden turn makes it appear the plane is about to go flying off the tracks. Adults and more adventurous kids will probably prefer the larger coasters, but this one still delivers what it promises. The sailing ship Columbia is a replica of the real Columbia vessel, which was the first American ship to circumnavigate the globe. It's a leisurely 15-minute trip around the rivers of America, where you'll see many of the same sights as from the Mark Twain riverboat and the Davy Crockett Explorer canoes, albeit from a different perspective. You can also pretend you're repelling pirates, as the Columbia is used as a pirate ship during Fantasmic. The Disneyland Railroad has four stops around the park. Tomorrowland, New Orleans Square, Mickey's Toontown, and Main Street Station. The trains are steam-powered and can take guests around the parks in 18 minutes, though most people hop on and off to get from one land to another. The Tomorrowland stop is a fan favorite, because between it and Main Street, guests are treated to scenes from the Grand Canyon and the primeval world. Yep, you get to see dinosaurs fighting at Disneyland. The Little Mermaid, Ariel's Undersea Adventure, is a dark ride with clamshell cars that go underwater to follow Ariel as she gives up her voice to pursue Prince Eric while her friend, Sebastian the Crab, pops up here and there to keep an eye on her. It's super colorful and filled with song, but it's also kind of short and skimps on Ursula's defeat, possibly to avoid scaring children. Filled with animatronics and so many doors, this ride is based on 2001's Monsters, Inc., it replaced one of Disney's least successful rides ever, Superstar Limo, in which you were a paparazzo trying to take pictures of celebrities. Instead of that baffling premise, the new one where you follow Mike and Sully on their adventure getting Baby Boo back to her own bedroom is a much better fit. Alice in Wonderland is a dark ride with a bit of outdoor travel through Alice's adventures in the mythical Wonderland. The caterpillar cars twist and turn on the winding leaf track and down the rabbit hole as a combination of animatronics and animation provide entertainment. It also has several scenes from the Disney movie of Lewis Carroll's classic tale, telling a cohesive story from beginning to end. It's both kid and adult friendly and colorful too. Based on 1988's Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Roger Rabbit's cartoon spin combines the fun of a dark ride with two connected cars that can be spun independently. Benny the Cab drives you through Roger's adventures while Judge Doom's hench weasels try to erase you with the dip. Part of the ride's repeatability is going back to see the things you missed if you spun your cab too fast. It's a boisterous, wacky ride that almost always has a long line, but with plenty of Toontown-based items to view while you wait. Mr. Toad's Wild Ride has been driving guests to hell since Disneyland's opening day in 1955 though its facade was thoroughly revamped in 1983 and the ride touched up. Each buggy is on a guided track that barrels through London as Mr. Toad's terrible driving skills have you narrowly avoiding certain death. Until you don't. The dark ride combines moving painted scenes, black lighting, and loud noises. Fun for adults, scary for kids. This boat ride features animatronic children and animals from all over the world singing It's a Small World After All. It's a song loop that will inevitably become an earworm you'll be humming the rest of your day, and possibly the rest of your life. The ride also gets an annual Christmas overlay, and while some Disney fans hate the ride, lines can still reach 90 minutes or longer on crowded days. The Matterhorn Bobsleds ride was the first coaster at the park. The ride has two different tracks that wind and dip through the interior and exterior of the mountain, with a Yeti that tries to catch your sled. 
The ride has been refurbished many times over the years, from new cars to an upgraded Yeti, and just reopened in June 2021 following repairs. In this dimly lit ride, which is based on the 1977 film of the same name, everything is infused with a palpable whimsy sure to delight. A wobbling beehive car takes a guided track through three tails. As Pooh tries to get his beloved honey, and his friends plan him a heartwarming birthday celebration, helping its ranking is the fact that everyone can ride, including babies. Luigi's Rollickin' Roadsters gets high marks from guests of all ages. Apart from being totally adorable, the ride has thrills galore, even though it doesn't appear to be moving fast from the outside. Trackless GPS technology allows the cars to dance with each other. Each dance depends on the song playing, giving it high repeatability for riders. Formerly an underwater attraction with mermaids and a goofy-looking sea monster, the submarine voyage was closed and eventually updated with a Pixar theme. Leaps in technology led to Imagineers using underwater projection to present characters from 2003's Finding Nemo going about their daily lives, as guests view them from the submarine's portholes. The ride can be a bit claustrophobic, the seats are small, and there are often long wait times, but this ride's cuteness makes up for the problems. Both a ride and a game, Buzz Lightyear Astro Blasters lets guests control the direction their spaceship faces as they use oversized laser guns to shoot targets and save Earth from Buzz Lightyear's nemesis, Zerg. Certain targets are worth more points than others, and hidden targets are worth the most, giving this ride a unique competitive aspect that many park goers embrace. Peter Pan's Flight is the highest rated ride in Fantasyland, as well as the highest rated of the original 1955 rides on this list. With its classic design that allows you to fly over London, Peter Pan's Flight is the kind of ride that Disney fans flock to as early as possible in the day in order to ensure a short wait time, because once that time hits about 40 minutes, it doesn't ever seem to go down. Star Tours is a flight simulator ride that has added several destinations from the Star Wars franchise over the years, as well as simulator upgrades, 3D, and special effects inside the cabin. The unpredictable appearances of various Star Wars characters, as well as the different destinations possible to visit each trip, make Star Tours one of those rides guests get off and get right back in line for. Big Thunder Mountain Railroad isn't just a runaway mine train, it's a haunted one. The engineerless train races through pitch-dark tunnels, over hills, and around banked corners at a top speed of 36 miles per hour. The ride feels faster at night and will have you sliding side to side if you don't hang on. One tip, the further back you sit in the train, the more intense your ride will be. Good luck. The Incredicoaster takes you on a wild ride, as the Incredibles chase baby Jack-Jack, who doesn't have control of his 17 powers yet. Incredicoaster is 121 feet tall, with one inversion and a max speed of 55 miles per hour. Speakers in the back of each seat play music and narration. You can even smell the num num cookies Mr. Incredible waves at Jack Jack. Some coaster enthusiasts complain about the lack of airtime and G force, but unless you're hardcore, you'll probably enjoy the ride. If you've ever wanted to see if you can beat the Kessel Run in less than 12 parsecs, you can pilot the Millennium Falcon at Disneyland for practice. The cockpit seats six, two each of pilots, engineers, and gunners. Each smuggling run is different, depending on the skill set of all involved. The ride is like a video game, as you earn or lose credits based on what you steal and how much you damage the ship. Everything about it is really well done. Hop into a doom buggy for a truly dark ride as you visit the other side and its population of ghosts and ghouls. Parts of the ride can be scary for children, but most of it is simply fun. The ride gets an overlay from September through the Christmas holidays each year as Jack Skellington from A Nightmare Before Christmas takes over. But the ride's popularity is a double-edged sword. The line can get up to three hours long. Grizzly River Run is a whitewater raft ride where you may get a little wet or soaked to the bone. The hotter the day, the longer you'll have to wait to board, too. Each raft holds eight riders and floats freely in the rushing river. The rafts are designed to spin, especially on the final drop, which adds to its unpredictability. It's probably safe to say no two rides are ever alike. Splash Mountain combines elements of a dimly lit ride with a flume. 
as your log floats down a snaking river, dips three times, and then drops five stories into a briar patch. For now, that is. The ride's ranking may change after it's rethemed to 2009's The Princess and the Frog, but exactly when that refurbishment will happen or how long it will take is still unknown. But if you want to ride it the way it is now, you'll want to do it soon. Toy Story Midway Mania is another combination ride game, but in 3D and with a toy cannon you operate by pulling a rope. How fast you shoot depends on how fast your arm gets tired. Each game presented is different, and the ride only spins between games. Like many of the rides in the top 10, you want to hit this ride as soon as you get into the park or you will have a long wait. Soarin' Around the World replaced 2001's original attraction, Soarin' Over California, though the ride's popularity hasn't seemed to wane. Guests are taken hang gliding around the world, courtesy of a unique IMAX experience that combines film, wind, and subtle smells for a 4D experience. It's almost impossible to ride Soarin' Around the World and not hear clapping at the end, which might be the most effective ranking metric of all. This indoor coaster has a surprise drop and deeply banked curves to simulate hurtling through space in a rocket. Because it's mostly in darkness, Space Mountain's top speed of 35 miles per hour feels much faster, especially when sitting in front. There are speakers in each seat playing music timed with the ride, and a great special effect in the beginning that makes it feel as if the ride is slowly spinning before launch. The ride has had two overlays, Halloween's Ghost Galaxy and the Star Wars-themed Hyperspace Mountain, and a long wait time that matches its classic status. This freefall gantry lift ride was the first Marvel-themed attraction in a Disney park. When it was originally the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, it had one pattern of drops. But in keeping with the Guardian's more chaotic nature, the ride now has six different drop patterns depending on which of its six songs plays over the mayhem. That unpredictability, coupled with the enhanced graphics and story, has boosted the ride's popularity. The darkly lit boat ride lasts 16 minutes. You'll witness various pirate shenanigans, with an occasional sighting of Jack Sparrow from the Pirates of the Caribbean film franchise. Though the ride has undergone updates and additions throughout the years to keep it fresh and modern, the pirates still plunder and the ride still has a couple of good drops to boost your adrenaline, just like Walt wanted. He's trying to escape. He's got one foot on the dock and one foot on a rocky boat. <laughs> you know, as the people go by, they see him, he's struggling and everything. Indiana Jones Adventure features a long hidden line that winds through the Temple of the Forbidden Eye for lots of fun before you ever even get to the transports. Once on board, it's a herky-jerky jaunt past poison dart-blowing skeleton warriors and a gigantic snake as you try to survive those and several other perils. The ride is so popular that in April 2021, Disneyland temporarily introduced a virtual queue for it to control the crowds waiting outside. Slot car toys come to life in this combination dark ride coaster that is themed to 2006's Cars. Drive through beautiful Ornament Valley and past several of the car's characters, after which your vehicle is prepped in Luigi's Casa de la Tires or Ramon's Body Shop before a side-by-side -side race over rolling hills. Web Slingers is the first new ride to open at Avengers Campus, and from all accounts, it's a fun, if short, hybrid game ride. It's hard to say how good the ride is, as recency bias may be affecting its ranking. Many reviews are positive, but some on the various Disney-related Facebook groups have noted wrist pain from the motion needed to shoot webs, while others have grumbled that in order to get the highest scores, you need to purchase $60 in accessories. So that's not cool. Star Wars Rise of the Resistance is hidden away in Batuu's forests to avoid detection by the nefarious First Order. It is really like five rides in one, including flight simulation, trackless GPS, and, well, we don't want to give it all away. Suffice to say, it is one of the best attractions ever devised. When the virtual queues go live in the parks, you can feel the anticipation as people try for boarding groups. If you're hoping to ride it, all we can say is, may the Force be with you. I don't know about you folks, but it's way past my bedtime. The morning comes around early, and that's one of my favorite times here, too. So, good night. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.